the Mother Earth is Unchimaka, the grandmother of everything. And the water is her blood, and to this blood we live. We've been here for thousands of years. We have always been citizens of these lands. But whenever there's a resource that needs to be exploited, our lands just kept getting taken. We didn't have say. And that has been inflicted on our people for over 200 years. Native Americans have some of the highest rates of poverty, dropout rates, suicide rates, being victims to police aggression and violence. We have continued collectively to be abused. And I think people are tired of being treated like third class citizens. We don't have any place else to go. These are our only remaining homelands. We have to protect them. Enough's enough. Since 2006, there's been a rush of companies coming into the state of North Dakota to develop oil. But here at Standing Rock, we have a resolution that goes back all the way to 2007 that says we don't want any pipelines to cross our ancestral lands. But yet, in 2014, they're starting to steamroll the Dakota Access Pipeline through threatening our water. The original route went near Bismarck, a community that's 90% white, and they decided to not take that route because they don't want to have the pipeline near their water. And then you have us saying the same thing, but we didn't matter. My son's buried on top of the hills here, and I said, who would build a pipeline next to my son's grave? Who would do that? And so I told Dakota Access, remember me, remember my face. I will be standing there. I wasn't an activist or any of these things. I'm a mom. I didn't know what to do. So I made a video on Facebook in my hotel room, and I asked people to come. The battle has just begun. I will stand to protect the water and the land. I'm asking each of you to come stand with us. People started coming. The camp here started exploding with people. And I thought in my heart, we're going to win this. This is a historic moment in time. First time ever in the United States where over 300 tribes have congregated and instead they'll stand in solidarity and unite with prayer. That is something that is beautiful. Really awful things happen to different tribes and it's so deeply spiritually wounding that I think when people see it happen to other tribes, our spirit is called to act because it happened to us too. It was the morning of September 3rd. They called me and said, LaDonna, the bulldozer is going through the sacred site. And people were crying and hollering and all these nations were standing together. But then the man pepper sprayed people and there was a woman singing that dog on people. Come on, go! The dog has blood in its nose and its mouth. Look at this. The worst crime that was committed by the demonstrators was locking themselves on a piece of equipment. But the individuals who released guard dogs on demonstrators, they didn't get charged with anything. Last time I checked, there was 135 arrests that were made. We have a state of emergency by the governor. We have National Guard called in. So you have to step back and say, well, what really is going on here? What we see is we have militarized the energy industry with a governor who believes that you can treat Indian people poorly. Three years ago, a woman froze to death on the Standing Rock Reservation because she couldn't pay her heating bill. And now you're planning a $3.9 billion pipeline that will help nobody but oil companies. It's really infrastructure for oil companies and not for people. They're realizing billions of dollars in revenue. But if you look at the top 10 poorest counties in this nation, two of them are on Standing Rock. We're not opposed to economic development. 
We're not opposed to energy independence, but we're tired of paying for it. When we talk about our defense for land and water, some of us will be arrested. The bloodline that I come from, Chief Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, that's a line of warriors and chiefs. So to uphold that tradition and that honor is something that I see now that I gotta do. It's everybody at this camp versus a governor, chief of police, the energy and oil companies. We have to make sure that this black snake is killed. We have to look within our heart to figure out how far are we willing to go. I was arrested, but how do you want to do it? What is your gift? What is your talent? What is your spirit telling you that, that, that you want to do? For most of my adult life, I have battled fossil fuel companies. And I dreamed that we should ride to the oil source. So we rode our horses three days to face our enemy and say, we're here and uh, we're not gonna let you do this. When our ancestors went into battle, we didn't know what the consequences were gonna be. All we knew is that if we did nothing, things would not go well for our children. Don't operate out of fear. Operate out of hope. Because with hope, everything is possible. I was very proud to ride with all those riders. We went to the monster, and we faced the monster. You know, I may not be able to stop them from laying pipe because it is already laid, but they have no oil in it. So I'll pray that that oil will never go. The only thing that keeps me going is prayer. And I have to have faith that my prayers are being heard because there's a company that's saying, we're gonna build this no matter what. And they'll say this pipeline will never break. It's gonna break. And who's gonna pay the cost? Native people, we are like pieces of people. We all have this trauma. I used to tell people when I was young, they would say, and what do you Indians want? The right to be left alone to live. Now I don't see that as an option. Now we must do our best to live and show the rest of the world how to live.